Uh, my name is Davy Knowles. I am a guitar player, singer, songwriter, uh, touring musician. Uh, Bad Door Slam was a, a, a band uh, I, I was in, formed on the Isle of Man, uh, where I'm from, um, and kind of a, a blues rock trio. Uh, we came over here in 2007 and uh, did a lot of touring and things went quite well and um, it was just a, a really fun kind of, uh, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a fun band to be in. Um, kind of ran its course. Um, and I, I stuck around here in the States. Uh, I was primarily kind of Fender stuff and, and uh, Stratocasters, Telecasters, that kind of thing. And um, as far as amps go, you know, rented whatever was around. Um, again, you know, we were traveling over from the Isle of Man, so we you know, were using a lot of backlined equipment. Um, but I, I came from the kind of old school blues style, I guess, kind of, of, of simple rigs, simple, simple stuff. Um, or trying to keep it simple anyway, but there's a lot of toys out there. That was Bad Door Slam, yeah. It was brilliant. I mean, touring with Mule was a huge education. You know, we, we had, I, I think as kids do, you uh, you go out there and you kind of, you know, got a slightly big head about it. And I remember the first gig was in Boston at the Orpheum and it was Halloween night. And we didn't weren't really super familiar with Government Mule, um, but we, we went up there, you know, we thought, oh, we did a really good, you know, did a good set. And then they went on and absolutely destroyed us, you know, leveled us. Um, and then they went on, they did two, two hours of their own stuff, then came back and did like Dark Side of the Moon start to finish. So our minds were totally blown. It was just a great education and a more kind of uh, gracious, welcoming um, and supportive group of folks would be hard to find. Lovely people. Oh man, yeah, and, and the, he did it in such a gentle way, but he really kicked my ass. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. Um, first, you know, first time I got up, it was, you know, pre-arranged what we were going to do. I had time to kind of go through it. And by the end of the tour, I was on stage not knowing what key we were in, what song we were doing. And it was just a wonderful kind of sink or swim in a, a, a very uh, uh, welcoming environment. It was wonderful. Bro. Oh, yeah. And I think your job as a musician is any opportunity like that that you get to work with someone of, you know, a high caliber and, uh, you know, even in, in a different field, it's important to be a sponge and pick, pick up as much as possible. Um, Probably most notably for me was working with Peter Frampton. Uh, Peter produced my second album, and uh, it was just incredible. And I just remember him, he, was, he cut a few solos on the record, and I just remember him uh, you know, really working hard to get his thing right. He, he had something he was going for, and, and I just kept thinking, if I could play like Peter Frampton's outtakes, I would be the happiest guitar player. Just such a beautiful, melodic, thoughtful, tasteful player, really, really took away a lot from working with Peter. Or it was a McCarty, okay. but uh, it's funny because growing up, uh, I always used to worship uh, PRS guitars. I just thought they were so beautiful. Uh, there was a guitar player on the Isle of Man that had one that I really kind of coveted. I had a picture of a custom 24 in my locker at school, you know, in place of... What color? It was Blue Mateo. Nice. Yeah. Nice. But, you know, where, where a normal teenage boy would have another picture hanging up on the inside of the lockers, me being a sad git. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> in this crowd, we're all right. Yeah, you're accepted because we all had the same. <laughs> but it was, uh, so it was, you know, it's a really, you know, it's a big dream come true. And it's, um, again, just kind of a, f a, a beautiful thing, how friendly and how uh, welcoming a company they are. Just a, a, a really, truly nice group of people. Uh, totally, totally random. I'd played some sort of a AAA radio conference kind of gig out in Colorado, uh, and it was Mickey Hart's manager uh, called me years later and just said, hey, um, Mickey and Bill Kreutzmann are doing this Rhythm Devils project again, and we'd love you to come play guitar. And I wasn't a deadhead at all. I mean, I, I, I obviously were aware, I was aware, but um, it wasn't a, a catalogue I'd really dived into. and, and uh, to have that, you know, experience of really stepping outside of, you know, my comfort zone, it was, it was wonderful. I mean, again, just a, um, a really magical experience and um, just to be exposed to that amount of, you know, music, it was, it was wonderful, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just that, I mean, the songs, I mean, they've got this, you know, jam kind of reputation and this, this um, you know, sometimes an unwarranted kind of, meandering kind of reputa reputation, but it's really not the case. And some of the songs in there are just breathtakingly beautiful. Um, really kind of uh, 
part of the kind of the, the rich kind of American songbook, I think. Yeah. Oh man, I mean, Ship of Fools. Yeah, I mean, there's also like, uh, um, for me, I always enjoy doing So Many Roads, which was a real later, you know, that. Oh, that well, I forgot, did it wrong. Just a beautiful, beautiful uh, tune. And, and oh man, there were so many. It was absolutely brilliant. I mean, it really was a, a really uh, a wonderful experience. And it was Keller Williams? Keller right? Williams and, and Tim Bloom from the Mother Hips, who I am just in total awe of. That man is uh, one of the greatest harmony singers out there. Just a beautiful voice, great guitar player. Uh, Andy Hess, who was with Government Mule, who's a bass player. Wonderful talking drum player, Sakura Adepojo. He was, oh, it was unbelievable. Yeah, it was a great experience. I'm a lucky boy. Lucky boy. Yeah, I've got a few. My, my main PRS is a custom thing that uh, Paul had built. It was a prototype to the, uh, the violin guitars that he put out a good few years ago. So it's, it's got this beautiful solid rosewood neck and uh, fancy inlays. And, um, just a, a really stunning, stunning piece of kit. But, um, I've got a hollow body that I love. And I have this uh, lovely gold top with just one pickup in it, and uh, it does. I mean, the, the nice thing is, you know, you, you pick up any of these things. I mean, this is the first time I've played this guitar, and, and it just works. And that's that's what I like. You know, you you need a, a dependable instrument, you know, to, to to kind of make sure you're you're comfortable and, and can represent your music as best you can. Yeah, one of each. <coughs> One of each would be great. Have you played the Silver Sky yet? I haven't played one of those yet. No, no. Um, and uh, I mean, there's so many, aren't there? I mean, um, uh, again, it's just one of those things of, I, um, do you need a, an enormous amount of guitars to do your job? Probably not. But do you need, uh, do you need them? Of course you do. They're beautiful things. They sound fantastic. And, and they all have different songs in them. So, you know, it's... Um, yeah, they're just wonderful, wonderful things. Whoa, that's a good question. Where's Paul? We need Paul in here. What? That, um, I don't know, you know, I've always loved the idea of having the P90 in the neck and the, and the humbucker in the bridge, um, having something like that. I'm not a huge tremolo guy, but you know, they're pretty handy every now and then. So I, 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 I don't use the tone control a huge amount, so it would probably just be P90, humbucker, um, volume control. And, and your toggle swing. 22, 24? 22. I'm a bit more, a bit more traditional, a bit more. Uh, but I mean, man, uh, uh, I don't need anything. I'm, I'm a happy boy as it is. Check out PRS Guitars at AmericanMusical.com.